Thank you, thank you, Pratima. You know, and thank you for creating the sympathy vote for me. I may not be firing on all cylinders, but hopefully those that I have are enough because I don't have too much and I wasn't given too much time. So, you know, I love this about entrepreneurs. Uh, we're welcoming you to Tycon Southwest. And entrepreneurs find it a lot easier to ask for forgiveness than permission because Tycon Southwest already exists. So let's rename the South by Southwest. We have a Tycon Southwest in uh, Denver, Arizona, Los Angeles, and San Diego. So we have two Southwest now. So like any entrepreneur, Pratima now asks for forgiveness rather than permission, and you have Tycon Southwest. But on behalf of both Tycon Southwest, which is now seven chapters, and the remaining 53, so we have a total of 60, those who can do the math, welcome to Tycon Southwest 2. We have a uh, great privilege of having this uh, crowd here, uh, and it's remarkable because if two years ago one were to visit Dallas, Ty's chapter was dead. So as I said last night, Pratima and Ty Dallas deserve the Lazarus Award from Ty for having come back from the dead. <laughs> Quick show of hands, how many in this room are entrepreneurs or were entrepreneurs? It's astonishing. How many would like to be entrepreneurs? That's about the rest of you. More importantly, how many of you know how to spell entrepreneur? <laughs> and that's a funny word, this entrepreneur. It didn't exist in the English language till about 30 years ago. Those of us who are old enough do remember, you know, we didn't know what entrepreneur was. And in fact, even the French, who we stole it from, only invented it about 125 years ago from the verb entreprendre, which means to undertake. So I guess all of us entrepreneurs are undertakers. <laughs> but the entrepreneur is a creature that I believe, my unscientific anecdotal research says, that not everybody is or can be an entrepreneur. It is a randomly distributed gene, and actually, I mean, that's what Kanwal calls it. I actually call it a virus, because it's not inherited. It's not passed on from father to son, or mother to son, or mother to daughter. It randomly infects people. Just think about it, your friends and your family. Some are entrepreneurs, most are not. My family is a perfect example. I have two brothers. There's three of us. Two plus one, math. And they're brilliant, far more intelligent IQ-wise and accomplishment-wise than me, but one's a doctor curing diabetes, and one's a PhD in artificial intelligence, been working for Siemens for 25 years, drive 55 miles an hour on the highway, not 56. <laughs> Risk averse, really follow the rules. Me, I have two radar detectors in my car, one in the front and one in the back, <laughs> just in case. So we didn't inherit it. And the thing to think about for entrepreneurs is that if it is randomly, evenly distributed across the globe, gender agnostic, culture agnostic, ethnicity agnostic, religion agnostic, color agnostic, whatever. My theory is there are as many inherently entrepreneurial women as there are men, as many inherently entrepreneurial, um, you know, whites or blacks or uh, Asians or whatever. Why is it then that the entrepreneurial quality of various ethnicities or genders or, is different? Because you have more entrep uh, men entrepreneurs than women, more, let's say, American entrepreneurs than, let's say, Chinese. And there are two factors that determine the entrepreneurial quality of the particular milieu we're talking about. And one is government and its infrastructure whether it lets you behave entrepreneurially or not let you behave entrepreneurially, and the other is culture. Think about it, institutions matter, so if you have good solid institutions, the rule of law, um, stock markets and venture capital and all of these other factors that allow entrepreneurs to flourish and flourish in an open and honest way, then you have an entrepreneurial environment. However, the most entrepreneurial friendly country in the world is Singapore. The World Bank does an analysis of the top 185 countries. India ranks 132nd. So we are succeeding in spite of our government, not because of it. And even uh, Brazil ranks 130th. So the two great BRIC countries are pretty lousy when it comes to government infrastructure support for entrepreneurs. However, 
Singapore, the most entrepreneurial, friendly, entrepreneur friendly country in the world, is not the most entrepreneurial culture. Again, it goes back to those of us from India know, what did your parents tell you when you graduated from college? Go get a nice job. The minute you tell them, and I know that Manoj and I were talking about breakfast, around the same time, 1988, I quit my job, very nice, well-paying job, a wage slave, albeit well-paid wage slavery, and decided to start my own business, and my family thought I'd gone nuts. And they thought I'd come back to my senses and I'd come back to a nice job sooner or later. So, culture. So the culture makes a difference, and government and institutions makes a difference, and I think one of the great things about the United States is we've got both working for us. We've got great government institutions, and we've got a great culture that promotes not excoriating failure. It's that whole disgrace that's associated with failure that prevents people from taking the risk. So, so glad you're all here. When you really think about India even, and I talked about India being 132nd, India till about the early 90s was not cool in this country. As I talked about yesterday, we were the land of snake charmers and elephants. There was no India rising, no India shining, no India as a brick country. And so back in those days, in the early 90s, came a group of young, not at that time younger, successful Indo-American entrepreneurs who had made it in spite of all of the glass ceilings that had to break through, in spite of all the obstacles and obstructions they had met. And this was in the Silicon Valley area, a small group of seven or eight people. One of them's here in the room. He's sitting right there. Stand up and be recognized, please, Kanwal. Kanwal Reiki. And they came together to say, OK, we've made it. What can we do? to help other aspiring entrepreneurs avoid some of these mistakes. It's like what I always like to say, I wish the me of today had, was sitting on the shoulder of the me of 30 years ago. One problem, you know, the me of today is 30 pounds heavier, so I may not have been able to take the weight, but certainly what the me of today would have whispered in the ear of the me of 30 years ago would have been very useful. And I think we can all relate to that. But this group came together, started Thai, and from those humble beginnings of eight people around a coffee table in somebody's living room, we now have the world's largest organization of entrepreneurs, 15,000 members in 60 cities in 18 countries. The 18th, soon to be announced, will be Bangladesh. And this is what we've spawned. So welcome from the, on behalf of these 15,000 members to Taikan Southwest 2. Thank you. <laughs>